Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, today for the opportunity that we have to come to praise and to worship you at the beginning of our week. And Lord, I just pray that we can put aside everything else that may be on our minds this morning. God, for the next few minutes, that we can just enter into the holiest of holies where you've given us access through your own blood, God, so that we can worship you today. God, let us be refreshed. Let us be encouraged, God. Let us have hope and faith uh, built up within our hearts. God, let us hear what you're wanting to speak to us this morning. And we'll give you the praise for all that's accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a day.
lifted up, Lord, in our lives, in our families, in Colorado Springs. We want people to see less of us, Jesus, and we want them to see more of you. So God, help us, like John the Baptist said, help us to decrease so that you might increase, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your glory, God. Your majesty, God. Your sovereignty on display in our lives. God, we just give you praise for that. Hallelujah.
circumstances that the enemy tries to get us all worked up about it's not going to matter then amen? amen when we see jesus hallelujah praise the lord let the rain of your presence Everywhere that I go 
worship him this morning. Lord, we're hungry for your presence. We're thirsty, God, for your righteousness to clothe us this morning, God. We know that in your presence is everything that we have need of. Lord, you said those who hunger and thirst after you shall be filled. And Lord, we claim that promise this morning. God, we don't want to be running ragged, running around on empty, God, barely getting by. But God, we want to be filled up with all that you have for us. Lord, we find that in your presence, Jesus, at the foot of the cross. Lord, you've provided everything that we need for life and godliness. Lord, we put our faith, we put our trust in you this morning. Fill us, refresh us, teach us from your word. And God, let us receive something of eternal value. God, in our hearts this morning, we just give you praise. We give you the remainder of this service. Have your way, God. Let your Holy Spirit speak and expose, God, those things that need to change in each one of our lives. And we'll give you praise. We'll give you thanks for all that's done. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Turn to Judges chapter 16. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at verses 25 through uh, 30. There we go. Praise the Lord. Do you ever have mornings when you just feel like the devil doesn't want something to happen? <laughs> but praise the Lord. The Lord has a message for us this morning. I want to share a message. I actually was going in a different direction in my preparations this week for this morning service and uh, the Lord just put this on my heart shared some of this a little bit of this on uh, Wednesday night and I thought maybe it was just for me or uh, but the Lord said no this is what I want you to preach about this morning and uh, I don't pre have a preached a lot of messages along this line of thinking but I, I feel like the Lord wants to say something not just to me but to the whole church um, and so I pray the Lord ministers to you this morning I want to share a message entitled one more time one more time. Let's look at Judges chapter 16, starting with verse 25. It says, So it happened when their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them. And they stationed him between the pillars. Verse 26. Then Samson said to the lad who held him up, held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord saying, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. Some translations say, one more time, one more time, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. The story of Samson. Most of us have heard that story in kids' church when we were children. And uh, I believe the Lord wants to speak to us some things from this passage this morning. The church in America, I think most of us would agree, has become an apostate church. Apostate. Once we had tasted of the heavenly gift. Hebrews chapter 10, if you don't know what apostasy is, talks about it. We once tasted of the heavenly gift, talking about salvation, but we've walked away by our own choice. And we've said, God, I'll make a way for myself. I know the truth, but I'm going to walk away and do my own thing anyway. Think of what a dangerous choice that really is. Yeah. And America has become an apostate church. We once knew the Lord Jesus Christ. We once knew the power of the cross. We once knew the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about Azusa Street. Think about the revival that broke out in this country. If you've not studied it, you ought to at the turn of the 20th century and how Pentecost came to this land. We once knew the power of the Holy Spirit, but you know what? We have forgotten God. We have abandoned the cross for the work of our own hands, psychology, psychiatry, 12 steps, 40 days, uh, man's methods. Instead of denial to self and death to self, we've become outrageously narcissistic 
And technology has only, social media has only helped that go even further than it ought to. We've become narcissistic. Remember the story of the man who looked in the lake and saw his image and he fell in love with himself. That's narcissism. We've fallen in love with ourselves. We're lovers of self more than lovers of God. Apathy and complacency and a seared conscience, it's what characterizes most of the church world in the United States of America in 2016. And I don't say that as if I'm over here and the church is over there. I'm saying that because that's what God sees. And I'm a part of the church. And it grieves my heart that our church is in the condition, the, the body of Christ in America is in the condition that it is in. We ought to weep. We ought to cry as God does for the state of the church. In our current state of spiritual bankruptcy, the so-called political leaders have slowly stripped away our freedoms. And church, we better wake up. We better wake up. Not just because Tuesday is election day. It goes on after that. But we better wake up. They've stripped away our freedoms. There's no prayer in school. There's separation of church and state to the extreme, what it was never intended to be. Taxpayer-funded abortions. We're paying for things that we don't even know what we're paying for. Half the time, we're probably funding the very terrorists who are terrorizing us the way our government is anymore. Mandated acceptance of the homosexual and transgender lifestyle. We've seen it crammed down our throats during this presidency. The liberal, socialist, communist Philistines, if you will, of 2016 are making sport of the church just like they made sport of Samson in the passage that we just read. They're saying, church, do what we say. Perform. You know, they want the church, the political so-called leaders of our country, they want the church when it benefits their campaign. But then they want to make sport, perform for us, show us, show the world that we're really holy, that we're really godly. But then once the election is over, where do they turn? They don't turn to the church anymore. And that's what's going on today. Much like the Philistines made sport of Samson in verse 25. It says, so it happened when their hearts were merry. They said, call for Samson that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them. And they stationed him between the pillars. As the church in 2016 in America, we ought to say, I'm tired of performing for these politicians and these so-called leaders. The Philistines of 2016. We're going to stand up and be the church that God wants us to be. Amen. Stand for righteousness. Stand for truth. Even if it's not PC. Even if it's not politically correct. Amen. We're going to stand for what's right. Affluence and prosperity has so blinded our eyes. Remember Samson had his eyes gouged out. Most likely because of his sin. He was a, a, a Nazarite. He took a Nazarite vow. And the power of God was upon him. Not because of his long hair but because of his faith, amen, and his obedience. But when we don't obey God, as Samson did, he was human like the rest of us, then there's problems that come. He had his eyes gouged out because of wrong ways, wrong pathways that he walked in. You know what? The church has been so blinded by affluence and prosperity here in America that we have um, things going on that ought not to be. As long as the Philistines keep throwing money and promises of more more, more, free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, and they throw them our way. We've turned a blind eye to the blatant sin, to the blatant corruption, and the gross perversion that they've been involved in and that they've been promoting. And we ought to wake up as a church and say, no, that's not God's way. Amen? It's not the way of truth. That's not the way of righteousness. And we've got to stop thinking that as long as we've got money in our pocket, everything is okay. Because it's not true. The gospel that most are preaching in the American church couldn't even be preached in a third world country. The gospel of so-called prosperity. God does want to prosper us, but we don't live for God for what we can get out of it. Amen? Amen. We live for God for what he did for us, his finished work. And we owe him our lives. Samson certainly wasn't perfect as we remember how he laid his head in the lap of a heathen seductress named Delilah. Remember that part of the story? That's what the name Delilah means. Did you know that? It means weakness. It means weakness. Samson never lost faith in God, in God's redemption plan. That's why God used him just once more in this story. That's why one more time 
God poured out his spirit upon Samson. Not because Samson was perfect, but because he never lost faith in his God and his God's redemption plan. He understood God's redemption plan in a different way than we do because he looked forward to the coming Messiah. We look backwards. But he never lost faith in his God and God's redemption plan. How do you know that, Pastor Eric? Read Hebrews chapter 11 and see whose name there. Samson didn't commit suicide, as some modern preachers want to tell you, because of verse 30. He laid down his life for the cause of his God and his God's redemption plan. And God's plan was to destroy the enemies of Israel through Samson's life. That was a sacrifice, not a suicide. And we know it was a sacrifice because Samson's named in the Hall of Faith, Hebrews chapter 11. And that's what we need to understand as a church. The church in America hasn't been perfect either. Amen or oh me. We haven't been perfect either. We've had our sex scandals of the 1980s, our prophet liars that seem to be increasing in the modern church prophesy. I've heard them prophesy things about how Trump is going to be our president and then turn around and prophesy how Hillary's going to be our president and God's going to use suffering. I'm going, some of you are right and some of you are wrong. And in the Old Testament, the ones who are wrong were stoned and killed for being wrong. And so we better wake up. There's some prophesying going on under the name of prophecy. The church is not perfect. We've had our problems. We've had our false teachers. And they seem to be on the rise. The church in America, like Samson, has far too often laid its head in the lap of weakness. Just like Samson laid his head in Delilah's lap. We've laid our head in the lap of weakness. Compromising our biblical values and Christ's righteousness only to be clothed with the filthy rags of selfish ambition. Self-sufficiency. Self-righteousness. But the church, like Samson must not lose faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? In our God, in our God's redemption plan. That's our hope. Amen? We're not perfect. We have no reason for God to show us mercy one more time. But we better believe, God, we need you to show your mercy. We better be crying out. Remember the story of Abram as he was crying out for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, God, if there's ten righteous, would you spare the city for ten? And he kept bargaining with God. And it wasn't bargaining really it was his faith he would refuse to let go of the only one who could bring an answer and a resolution to the 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 rampant um, corruption and wickedness and perversion of Sodom and Gomorrah and I'll tell you what America is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. and the church the remnant better be crying out for God's mercy because he has every right to destroy this land in judgment and to be righteous in doing so we better be crying out in faith like Abram did for Lot and his family, for his uh, land to be spared. The church, like Samson, must not lose faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is God's redemption plan. And Samson didn't understand it like we understand it now, but that's God's redemption plan. We need to walk in the light that God's given us or God's going to take the light away. He's going to take the lamp away. And it needs to shine into some more dark places. Amen. Yeah. I've got family members who once knew walked away. I've got friends who are lost. And that lamp needs to shine in some more dark places before Jesus comes back. God can restore faith to the church. And he may just do so at this critical crossroads of our November 8th election. I really feel that in my spirit. That God may do that in this crossroads, this critical crossroads that we're at, but I think it's very much dependent upon the church. Will we cry out? Will we position ourselves in faith? Will we be the church that God wants us to be? Like Samson prayed in verse 28 of Judges 16. Look at that verse again, if you would. Oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. Or as I said in other translations, it says one more time. God, would you strengthen me one more time? Think of the strength that Samson demonstrated. The Philistines came upon him and they, they, he told them all these false things about how he, they could overcome his strength. You know, if they did all these things that he would not be able to have strength. His strength came from the Lord. And, and he would, you know, do incredible supernatural feats of strength all throughout his life. And he's praying, Lord, one more time. 
Would you show your power, your strength in me? Oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. You know what? The church needs to cry out just like Samson did in verse 28. This week, if we can't cry out this week, there's something wrong with you. You ought to get back to the cross and make sure you're saved. Is what I would say as a pastor. We've got to cry out, God, remember us. Amen? God, remember us. God, send one more reformation to our nation through the message of the cross and the preaching of the cross. Send one more revival of your Holy Spirit and fire so that one more harvest of souls can be brought in before your return. We ought to be crying that out. Amen? Those of us sitting in this room, if no one else will, we'll do it. Amen? God, one more time, would you show your power, your strength? That's the power of God, the preaching of the cross. Amen? Not smoke and lights and gimmicks, but the preaching of the cross will, will allow the demonstration of power, God's supernatural power, to come one more time. And we can see reformation, the prodigals coming home. Amen? There's some of you in this room I know you believe in God for prodigals to come home. God says it can happen by way of the cross one more time if we want it. But what does God hear from our nation? Does he smell the stench of our corruption and our wickedness? Or, does, or in the midst of that, does he hear the church crying out saying, God, have mercy one more time. Let the truth be proclaimed one more time. If he doesn't hear that, there's judgment coming, folks. There's judgment coming for our nation. We need to be crying out as a church, God, remember us. God, send one more revival, one more harvest of souls before you come back. One more time, will you, Lord, allow the liberal, socialist, communist, ungodly agenda of our modern-day Philistines to be destroyed? Only God can stop that wickedness. We see more and more each day how deep the corruption really is in our country. And it's not just politics. It's even in the church. All the so-called leaders of our nation have gotten so far away from God. We've walked away in apostasy. We, ought to, we have a church on every corner, but yet we don't know the truth of God. We've got to cry out. We've got to ask Him, Lord, one more time, will you destroy the modern-day Philistines so that the work of God can go forward? Amen? If the work of God is allowed to go forward, God knows that we ought to know lives can be changed. Amen? Wickedness can be reversed. Look at Saul's life. God got a hold of him on the road to Damascus had letters in his hands to persecute Christians, and yet God turned him around, and he wrote 13 books of the New Testament. He had three missionary journeys, and we're probably sitting in church this morning because of a man that used to be named Saul that God got a hold of and named Paul and brought us the gospel, the message of the cross. We ought to be saying, God, one more time, would you allow the work of God to go forward? God, we're willing not just to pray for it. We're willing to be workers in the harvest yes, field. Yes. If you give us mercy, we will do everything, God, within our power before you come back to get this message out. Amen. That's what God is looking for. If we just want to play church and play games and keep on with our money in our pockets, God's not going to answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. If that's all we want is to be comfortable, God's going to just say, okay, well, it's been enough. And he'll be righteous in doing so. But if we'll say, God, we need this. The work of God must go forward. And God, I'll be a laborer. Use me. Here am I. Send me. I believe God's going to hear it. And I believe he's going to move one more time. The church in America, like Samson, may just have to be willing to lay its life down. Are you there? I think about it myself. The movie that just came out about Columbine. My daughter and my wife got to go see that. We see things like that. That may be more common as the last days continue. Are you willing to lay down your life in sacrifice because you believe God's redemption plan, the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified and our freedoms are that important? Are you willing, if it means laying your life down, that that's what you'll do. God's looking for a church that will cry out for that. Samson placed his hands on the two support pillars of the Philistines' temple. And this was, I believe, a temple to Dagon, one of their gods. Huge, elaborate temple. And they were very proud of it, of course. And main sport had games go on in the, in the middle of this temple, much like the Colosseum in Rome. And he asked for his hands to be put on these two support pillars pillars of the Philistines temple and the Lord strengthened him supernaturally 
so he could push them over and destroy his enemies. One last act of courage for the cause of God's kingdom. The American church needs to place its hands on the two support pillars of our corrupt government. And I'll just say it, I'm talking about the Democrats and the Republicans, both. I don't care what party you lean towards. The Democrats and the Republicans are the two support pillars of our government. We may have third party candidates, but a Democrat or Republican is going to be elected this Tuesday, whether we like it or not. But we need to ask the Lord to strengthen us regardless of what happens on Tuesday, whether it goes the way we think it should or not. We ought to pray, Lord, strengthen us to push down and destroy the corruption, the degradation, the moral de de decay that has made sport of the American church from both sides, Democrat and Republican. The solution for the Reformation and revival in the American church isn't Republican or Democrat. Amen? It's neither one. It's Jesus and the cross. It's Jesus and and the cross. And we ought to say, God, destroy this corruption. It's exposed. If nothing else, this election campaign cycle has exposed how dirty politics is on either side. Amen? How awful it is. And the establishment is being crumbled because of how wicked it all is. We ought to say, God, finish the work. Let there be something totally new that comes regardless of the outcome on Tuesday, God, let righteousness prevail. Let Jesus and the cross go forward. Between now and Tuesday, the true church better be crying out for God's mercy. God, be merciful to us. Be merciful. Asking the Lord, like Samson, to remember this great nation. Think about the United States of America. Why has God been so good to us? Why has he prospered us? Why have we seen affluence like we have? We look at our city, you drive around, and we've lived in other places in ministry, and even just within this country. We look at this community, most everybody lives in a two-story house in this city. Nice neighborhoods, you know, parks and sidewalks and luxuries that we so often take for granted. The fact that we get to look at the Rocky Mountain Range and God's creation. We're a blessed people. Why has God blessed this nation? He's blessed us because our greatest export has been the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've sent more missionaries around the world than most any other nation up until just recent years. We were sending out more missionaries. There are nations that are passing us now. And it's because we've forgotten God. But we need to ask the Lord for mercy. He has brought uh, this nation to where it's at. It's affluency and it's prosperity because of the gospel. And we better be petitioning God to send one more reformation by way of the cross. One more revival, one more harvest of souls. God, help us to keep bringing this message to the world because very few other countries are doing that. And the only way we're going to continue in blessings, the only way we're going to continue in God having mercy upon our nation, not bringing the judgment that we deserve for worse sins and corruption than even Sodom and Gomorrah had, is because the gospel, the work of God is going forward. And so we need to pray, God, let that be so. Amen. Let that be so. Let it be so in my life. Let it be so in our church. Let it be so in the American church. Amen. To where we're not listening to the false teachers and the prophet liars anymore. We're listening to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're doing everything that we can to get it out. Like Samson said, Lord, just once more, one more time, would you send a reformation? Would you send a revival? Would you let there be just one more harvest of souls? I believe the Lord wants to do that and he wants to pour out. Not a long message this morning, but what God put upon my heart. I want us to stand. We're going to close with a time of prayer. It's early. I want us to spend some time praying for our nation. Not just today, but I want us to pray between now and Tuesday. God, would you please have mercy upon us? It was his mercy that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen? We didn't deserve what Jesus did for us at the cross. Our nation certainly does not deserve uh, God remembering us one more time. We've laid our, our head in the lap of weakness far too many times. But we need to say, God, forgive us. Forgive the church for what we've allowed to continue in our country. 
And God bring a revival. I want us to think about this this morning. There may be those who are listening, and I never want to miss an opportunity for someone to come to know the Lord as their Savior. That's what this is all about. Amen? It's for people to come to know Jesus. Are you saved? Are you ready for heaven this morning? John 3.36, it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And if you're not saved this morning, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I believe that what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago was for me, for my sins. And Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive all my past sins. And Lord, wipe them clean by your precious blood. And Lord, don't only just wipe away the guilt of my past sins, but God, break the dominion the power of that sinful nature over my life and give me a divine nature. Amen. Give me a heart like yours, Jesus. And I think a prayer that simple, God will respond to. When you say, I believe in Jesus, I receive what you did at the cross for me. And Lord, I want to be ready for heaven. I want my sins to be gone. I want to live in the confidence that I'm not chained and shackled to my old way of life. I'm free in Jesus. Amen. And so if you've not done that, if you've not given your heart to Jesus, I want to encourage you to do that. If you've gotten away from him, you're a prodigal that's been running. Jesus says it's time to come home. The running has been long enough. and You've wasted all your resources on things that are never going to satisfy you. Come home before it's too late. Come home and receive the Lord. But I want us this morning who are here, I believe most of us have already made that decision with the Lord to give our hearts to Jesus. I want us to find a place to pray. And uh, Tanya's going to put on some music for us to play, uh, to pray to. And uh, let's find a place to pray. Let's ask the Lord for mercies upon this great land of ours. Amen. Let's pray for the election that's coming up Tuesday. That God's will will be done. And God's will will be done. Nothing takes him by surprise. Amen. They can rig elections all they want. God sets up kings and he deposes them. He knows and he's in control. He's in control of who's ruling. And so we need to walk by faith, amen, not by fear, not by sight, and trust the Lord. But let's pray, God, would you have mercy on this great land of ours? Let's pray for one more Holy Spirit outpouring, amen, for the Lord's will to be done in this election Tuesday. We need to hear the Lord to hear us from heaven, as Second Chronicles 7.14 says, to forgive our sins and to heal our land. Amen. Our land is sick. It's sick because of sin. And we need to say, God, would you heal our land? And I don't want us to, uh, to spend a little bit of time praying for that on our own. Can we do that as we put some worship music on? And then we'll close together in a time of prayer. But let's say, God, one more time. One more reformation. Amen. One more Holy Spirit revival. One more harvest of souls. And God, put me right smack dab in the middle of it. Use me. God, let there be something that happens in my life that allows the work of God to go forward. Let's, let's find a place to pray and do that this morning.
Hallelujah. Can you stand this morning? Praise the Lord. I want to sing this song this morning and then we're going to close in prayer. I just want us to respond to the Lord. You know, it's Jesus and Him crucified that's the answer uh, to what's going on in our country. And that's what this song is about. So let's, let's worship Him. scriptural but can you find one meal between now and Tuesday I think it's that important that we fast fasting doesn't change God let's be scriptural amen because you fast God's not gonna look and say oh Eric's fasting so I'm gonna do something I wouldn't normally do that's not how God works he's gonna see us walking in obedience though fasting changes you amen and I think all of us better have God's perspective not our own. It's going to change you. And when you set yourself apart from what you normally do, turn off the TV, turn off Facebook and your texts on your phone, shut yourself into a prayer closet and avoid one meal 
We, we rarely go without food in our country. Set aside one meal and say, God, I'm going to spend the time I normally eat lunch or I normally eat breakfast or supper, whatever it is. The time I normally spend on Facebook and God, I'm going to spend 20 or 30 minutes crying out one more time. God, would you send a reformation? One more time, would you send a revival? One more time, would you send a harvest of souls to this country? Because I believe God needs to hear our voice. Amen. He needs to hear the remnant crying out for mercy one more time. And it says in Isaiah 58, if you've never fasted before, read Isaiah chapter 58. It talks about the kind of fasting God responds to. Most of what the modern church does in the area of fasting is nothing more than a diet. It has no spiritual value whatsoever because it's not biblical. Isaiah 58, why do we fast? So that the oppressed can go free. And we need to fast for our nation because there's too many who are oppressed by the enemy. Some are even possessed. And if we'll fast and pray because of our faith, that's what God responds to. He's going to move. He's going to work. He's going to answer prayers. And it says there needs, in Isaiah 58, it says there needs to be a restoring of paths to dwell in, a restoring of the old path. We know what the old path is, amen? It's the cross. It's Jesus and him crucified. And so as we fast and pray, let's pray uh, and fast according to what the scripture says. And let's believe God for the oppressed to go free in our country and for a restoring of paths to dwell in, which the paths to dwell in are only going to come by way of the cross. And let's pray for that. Let's pray for that this morning as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service this morning. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that we can sense moving among us, God, even now as we're closing in prayer. God, I just pray that something's been stirred within us, God, for our own country. Lord, we're asking like Samson, would you remember us one more time? God, as the remnant that you're coming back for, we're asking like Samson, would you strengthen us supernaturally one more time to do things we can't do in our own strength? in bringing the gospel, the message of the cross, to this great land one more time. God, help us to get the word out to other countries, to other nations from this country. God, you've prospered us for that very reason. God, help us to get back to that. Move us out of our comfort zones as the remnant and give us a fierce faith that won't bend, that won't bow. And God, we're asking you just one more time, would you send a reformation? Bring the prodigals home. Bring our unsaved loved ones back to you. God, would you one more time send a Holy Spirit revival all across this land that preachers would preach the truth again. And God, that we would see people baptized in the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders and miracles and mighty deeds, confirming your word like we've never seen before. God, we're asking you to do that one more time. And God, let there be one more great harvest of souls that not only touches America, but God, that touches the world. So that when you come back, you're coming back for a church that's without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We're asking for the oppressed to go free. We're asking for a restoring of paths to dwell in, God. The message of the cross, the way of the cross to be made clear. Let it be a dividing line in this nation. And God, we're just believing you for good things. Meet the needs of each person that's here this morning. You know the heavy burdens that your people are carrying. And I thank you that you're the lifter of heavy burdens. And God, minister grace and hope and strength, refreshing to your people. And God, let our eyes be fixed upon you this week, knowing that you're sovereign, knowing that you are the Lamb who's seated on the throne. You're in control. We trust you. We thank you. Bless us as we leave this place this morning. Let us be tools, instruments in your hand that you flow through this week. And we'll be quick to give you the praise and the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.